damaging. This is very damaging. It situates almost everything we know of what, what the author of the Quran is introducing. It situates it not in Mecca, but way up a thousand miles further north in Jerusalem. Now, what is the new material you're going to introduce? We're all well, waiting with bated breath. Over to you. Well, well first of all, I, I thought we'd just pause and, and ask, um, why, why is anybody even surprised at this? Um, why is anyone even surprised? So a, a very, very large part of the Quran is devoted to biblical themes. It, it involves many biblical characters like Abraham and Noah and Moses and Jesus. It retells stories like the flood and, uh, and, and Moses, the Exodus stories and so on. Many of the same theological ideas that are in the, um, in the Bible, like um, the end days, uh, God's judgment, heaven and hell, um, appear in the Quran. They're not always re um, very recognizable, but, the, the, but they are there. Um, the Quran's laws are, are based, things like uh, the prohibition of eating uh, swine, um, are, are based upon the Old Testament laws. And many, as uh, Gabriel Said Reynolds has shown in, in various books and articles, uh, the Quran's own turns of phrase, its language, time and time again, uses turns of phrase from the Bible. So why, why would anyone even be surprised that the focus, that the place that it calls the sacred place of prostration, the sacred place of worship, um, effectively the Holy of Holies, why would anyone even be surprised that that would be Jerusalem? If one asked Abraham uh, or Isaac or Ishmael, uh, you know, where would the sacredest place be? Where's the most sacred place? Well, Abraham built, built a few altars, but I think he probably would have said Mount Moriah would have been the most holy place. If we could imagine having this conversation with Abraham, I think he would have said that place where I, where I uh, fulfilled um, God's test, where I passed God's test would be the most sacred place. If one asked Moses, where's the most sacred place? Um, he, he might not have been able to pinpoint it, but he would have said it's in Canaan. He said it's in the God's promised land. It's in the land God promised to Abraham. If you're asked, for example, some of the other characters from the, uh, the kings of Israel who are mentioned in the Quran, Saul and David, and most of all, Solomon, where would Solomon say was the most holy place? He would have said the Jerusalem temple. And if one takes it into the New Testament, uh, Mary, according to the Quran, Mary is raised in the Jerusalem temple, and uh, and, and Jesus uh, associated himself with the Jerusalem temple. If you ask Mary or Jesus, you know where where is the most holy place? I think they would say the Jerusalem temple. Um, it's uh, it it seems to me that everything in the Quran seems to push in this direction. Found Let me interject right here. And yes. this, is what, this is how a Muslim will now respond to you. You must be aware of chapter 21 of the Quran, the story of Abraham in the Kaaba, in Mecca, yes. going into the Kaaba, destroying it, going back to his house. If he has a house there, that means he lives there. Am I correct? Hagar. Um, and yes, yes. Hagar is there in, uh, in Mecca, and he drives her out of Mecca, and then he has to go and see here. If you take a look at see chapter seven of the Quran, look and see who is the ones that where they're thrown out of Garden of Eden. Remember, they're thrown out of the Garden of Eden. That's Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. This is the first man and woman. Where is Eve thrown to? You need to go to the traditions. The traditions are very clear. She's thrown down to Mecca. If you were to go to the traditions, and we did a video on this a number of months ago, where we looked and just unpacked all of the 19 biblical prophets, the very biblical prophets you're talking about, and every one of those biblical prophets are from Mecca and Medina. Not one of them is from up in Jerusalem. That's why this is a huge surprise to many Muslims. It's not a surprise to you and me. But for Muslims, they're going to confront you on this, and they're going to say, no, 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 no. All these events, these biblical prophets that we're talking about, and that includes Solomon that you just mentioned, that includes also all the others that you're, the 19 others of, that are biblical prophets, this all takes place in the Hejaz in Arabia. So what you're suggesting, and for us, this is for uh, almost laughable. You are correct. For us, we would say this is not a surprise for us. 
In fact, we're wondering why Muslims haven't picked up on this and haven't realized that this is a huge historical anachronism for them. If they're going to continue with this notion that Abraham and Eve and all the other prophets lived way down a thousand miles further south in a place called Mecca and Medina. Yes. Uh, well, um, Mel did um, a wonderful, Mel has done some really, really great videos over the years. Uh, I think one of my favorite images of Mel's um, is when he talks about Las Vegas. And he talks about, um, it, how, it produces some pictures of Las Vegas, and they've got a little Eiffel Tower there, don't they? And they've got a little Statue of Liberty, and they've got some pyramids. And, and yes, it, it, Mel, Mel says, if you, if you have a desert, if you have a desert, you can put anything in the desert. It, it, it's, 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 a blank, it's a blank sheet, and you could tell any, any story and say, because there's nobody there to disagree with you. There's no, the land doesn't have its own history that would contradict you. But what I say here, my, my, my thesis here, is, um, is that if one reads the Quran and one reads about Abraham and, and so on, and all the stories that predate the Quran, it's clear that it's all, a, that, that it's all about the story of the character, the stories from the Bible. And if you take all the stories from the Bible, it's it's about uh, it's, it's all or the, the central part is about Jerusalem. Yeah. Paul, let me just say one thing on this. Um, <laughs> I mean, you you must have you must have seen you must have been to uh, uh, the British Museum. Possibly, if you've ever been in London, you have to go to the British Museum. Yeah. If if you go to France, you need to go to the one in Paris. Uh, if you ever get out to Iraq, go to the Mosul Museum, and you go to all these museums around the world. The one in Cairo. Every one of them have artifact after artifact after artifact from the different periods, from the Assyrian period, from the Babylonian period, from the Persian periods, all these different periods with artifacts that support the biblical text, that support First and Second yeah. Kings, First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Samuel. I did a whole tour of the British Museum, a four-hour tour that I had over 6,000 people go through when I was living in London, just looking at all the support for the biblical references um, artifact after artifact, obelisks and tablets and murals and you name it, stellas and all the rest. They all support exactly what the Bible says. And in every case, they place these prophets up north. Nowhere do they place them. Dan Gibson asked, a, he went to a meeting a number of years ago, and he went and he asked archaeologists who are in Mecca, who are from this, uh, the, the Saudi Arabia, who had gone to, who are at a convention in Europe. And he went up to them and he said, with all this building that's going on in Mecca right now, with all these cranes and these huge skyscrapers that are going up, the, the fourth highest uh, skyscraper in the world is now erected there with that huge clock tower. And he said, when you are making these skyscrapers, you have to build huge foundations. You have to dig to create the foundations. You as archaeologists, I'm sure you have gone and you have asked for all the artifacts that they're digging up out of the sands there in Mecca. What have you found? And their response to him was, we have only found an old Ottoman fort from 1299. 1299 AD, not BC, 99, that's the 13th century. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing earlier that they have been able to find in Mecca, earlier than the 13th century. That right there is the reason now why Muslims are going to have a hard time confronting what you're saying here. What you're saying here, most of the people who are listening will agree with you. But Muslims, I hope Muslims are listening. Muslims, you're going to have a problem with what Paul's introducing, because almost everything you're dependent on is based on an area of the world that was desert. You're right. And as Mel has put so figuratively, you have created a, lo a Las Vegas down there made up of all kinds of objects that just don't belong and made up of all kinds of peoples that, that should be there in that place or at that time, but possibly a thousand miles further north. Mm -hmm.